understand, do you need a remoter? Yeah, I couldn't find it. I okay. don't know where it was. Uh, there was one in here, but if not, but I'll, I'll get you one. Okay, cool. I don't know. That that is a little out of my realm. Not in a. The bar is high. The bar is very high. I don't know if I can handle it. Not so much the fun. Oh, is that what this is? Yeah. By the way, I didn't get to thank you for inviting me oh, to that. Like, that was fun. That was totally yeah. fun. Like, you just told all of us riffing. I just thought that was fun. Yeah. So thanks for inviding me. Yeah, thanks for, thanks for coming. We, I, like, we left because Jeremy wanted to talk. And I was like, oh, I need to go say thanks. So okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Windows is always the driver. I always find this funny. And it's just like, it's just, it should just work. I don't understand. I don't still understand why it takes because it's just a keyboard. Yeah. It's, a, it's a, actually almost worse on a Mac because what it does on a Mac is it like goes, oh, let me detect your keyboard. Oh, Press yeah. the shift key in, the, in this key and it's like, uh, yeah, there's none of those on here. Yeah. <laughs> so then you have to like, but it, but it won't let you hit, like skip this step and like let me manually add it. You have to like hit buttons until you can then say, yes, it's a US keyboard. Yeah, yeah. This, and what's ridiculous about Windows is that it just takes forever yeah. to install anything. Yeah. If, if worse comes to worse, man, I, I can just do it. I'm thinking about next week. Let's see. Oh. Cool. Just doesn't support the make the screen go black button. Interesting. So, so you won't accidentally press that. So you realize you're putting it on. So that's, the, that's the pointer. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. What time does this session start? Uh, ten after. Ten after. Okay. And then go until three fifty. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it's not as oh, as so like, <laughs> not the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. You have to. Absolutely. I still think for me. Handled it, but you're gonna need one. What's that? I, said, I, I, I took a bandage. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's not a problem. Should have been listening. That's not a problem. Yes, and he's right. That's Wirelessly? That takes a lot of calories to just digest those calories. A lot calories. of energy. Yeah. A lot of energy. Yeah. Did you guys get some good information today? Oh, yes. Yeah. And now I'm going to watch the videos that I haven't. Yes. Well. Always value in those. Always some good value in those. So I don't know if you guys have an Instagram, but go ahead and just take a picture of the session and post it to Instagram if you can, and just hashtag Tech Phoenix. I know uh, Danny loves that. If you guys yeah. got an Instagram, but uh, go ahead and do that if you can. Yes, you're back. And where's your podcast? We told you <laughs> do not come back without a show. Okay. That was plenty the box inside. isn't even open yet. The box I has the show in it. It's all scripted. All I gotta do is say it. I don't know if that, that must be your Instagram. What is your Twitter handle? Your Twitter handle? My it's Twitter is Shan J. Hernandez. Because too long for Twitter. Yeah. Yeah. Too this long. is too long for Twitter. Oh, <laughs> Twitter's basis, that's why. What's that? It should be, but Shan my website is Shan J. Hernandez. So Shan J. Hernandez is my Twitter handle, too. All the other Shannons were taken by other girls around the world. Well, uh, I tried Shan Man because Shan that's the name. That's, that's the, 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 the moniker, but there's a guy out of England that has Shan Man, and he won't give it up to me. And I told him, like, dude, I'll pay you 200 bucks. He's like, this is like a $4,000. Like, well, have you seen my followers? And I was like, well, you're $4,000 full of crap. <laughs> and now you have no money. So, yeah. huh. You still don't have money. Sorry. Did everyone get one of these so far? Cool. Yeah. You know the Overcast uh, pod, podcast player? You know the uh, Overcast? It's a good, good podcast player. And uh, the guy who made it, Mark Roman, um, he, uh, he wanted to get Overcast.com because he, he already had the name and he had reserved the hair, trademarks and all that. And he wanted, but he knew the domain was available, but it wasn't that way. He got Overcast.fm and whatever, he got other stuff, right? But he wants to get the name. And the guy wants 100 million dollars for it. I'm like, what kind of number is that? Yeah. No one on the planet. Get your finger. Yeah, okay. Dr. Evil owns that. Evil owns that. <laughs> That's what he's saying. You're 100 million dollars full of crap. And he has a go. But it's like, why would you even, like, give that number? That means right. I am not selling it. Right? right? So, or that means he is if you got that amount. But 
No one on the planet would pay that. It'd be cool to see that bank wire transfer. If I had one hundred thousand billion dollars, I would not pay him one hundred million dollars for that. So I wouldn't even sell my own domain. Yeah. 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 Like there you go. For a million years, that could yeah. work. <laughs> okay, we'll start. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Like that. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started, and you guys are in for a treat. Uh, we're going to be talking a, even just a little bit more and going further nuts and bolts into how to start a podcast, how to keep it simple, and uh, how to get your show up and going off the ground. Um, I met Shannon, the presenter of today's uh, presentation, if you have not met him already, uh, just a couple months ago, right? Two yeah. months? Uh, over in Dallas at <laughs> Podcast Movement. And... That podcast, that, that conference was really cool, uh, a little bit bigger than this one, so to say. But um, when I met Shannon, just his transparency, his willingness to help, his willingness to just give all of what he knows was extremely apparent. And I'm pumped that he gets to show you guys uh, kind of top to bottom how to get your show started and how to keep it simple. So he's going to share more about him, what he does, and uh, how podcasting can hopefully affect and change your life. So with that, let's welcome Shannon Hernandez. <laughs> So, um, thank you, and we also, Jeremy and I got to spend uh, four hours in the Dallas airport that is right. waiting for our plane on the worst possible airline ever Do just to come. Do not fly Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no. Walmart. It was like a last minute choice. We couldn't. <laughs> we, smell everything. Yeah, we could not get like a Southwest airline at the time, like the timing was just bad, so okay. I could not get a sound, so that was what we did. <laughs> so anyway, thank you guys so much for, I really, uh, really do appreciate it. Um, again, my name is Shannon Hernandez. You might, some know me here uh, in the Valley as the Shan Man on 98 KEP. We'll get into that here in a little bit. Uh, but uh, of course, uh, I asked some of you guys before you came in, um, if you got some really good information from today, we're on the last session, I know we're just running on steam right now, so just kind of stick with me through this, uh, this last session. But did you guys get some pretty good information on what you're trying to do, okay? How many of you guys are actually in just getting started with the space right now so you're just getting started in the space and uh, just by a show of hands how many of you guys actually have a podcast okay all right how many of you guys want how many of you guys have tried to get into the podcasting space but just really didn't know what was going on you so you kind of have an idea of what's going on okay so again you guys made an excellent choice today and what I've done for you guys, if I, I've handed out a, a little booklet, a little pamphlet for you guys, and it's really just to take notes in case you guys didn't have any notes to take, okay? And I want you to go ahead and use those notes when you open it up, it's blank, and you can just go ahead and use that. So um, today I want to talk about podcasting, what you can do to launch your podcast. The thing that we, I, I see the most with people is the difficulty in trying to launch their own podcast. You might have a lot to say. Maybe you have a blog that's about comic books. Maybe it's about food. Um, you have a lot to say, but you just, just don't know how to get it out there. Maybe you're writing it, but you're finding that half the world doesn't like to read, and they would rather listen and watch. So um, you've got a lot to say. You don't know how to do it. Maybe you have something to say, but you just don't know where to start first. So today we're going to go ahead, and we're going to start to take action with your journey. I really want you to go ahead and begin the story today, and I want you to take action into starting your own podcast. It could be today. It could be tomorrow. But I want you to take action within the next week to start your own podcast, okay? So today we'll talk about a little bit about me, where I came from, and then I'll give you some podcasting tips. And then I'll leave, uh, I'll leave the last part for some question and answer if you guys have some questions about podcasting. So uh, let's go ahead and move forward. So just a little bit about me. And just so you guys know, uh, this, is gonna, this is actually a presentation that's about an hour long, but I have condensed it down to about 35 minutes. So I'm going to go really fast. So if you got your pen, paper, uh, just be aware that I'm going to be going through some stuff pretty fast. And I'll try to, I'll try to keep you guys um, uh, caught up with what I'm talking about. Um, so a little bit about me. In 2000, I really kind of started to live my dream. I got into the radio industry. I started working um, at 93.3 KDKB. This is now the defunct 93.3 KDKB. It was a rock station back in the day. Now it's an alternative station. But this is what I started doing. I started going into the radio promotions and doing the marketing and business side. And I was getting paid to meet celebrities. That's a cool job, if you ask me, to sit and meet little guys like Mini-Me. That is, to me, that was like one of the first things that happened to me. Meet many me, why not? And it was just, this is before he became a hot mess, okay? So this is way before that, but um, this maybe this, this is probably a little bit of foreshadowing with his guilty shirt because now we all know kind of a hot mess he is. But this is what I started doing, and I really wanted to dive deeper into the radio industry and meet more celebrities. And I've met celebrities all over the place. It doesn't mean that I'm trying to say, oh, I've met all these great people. It's just I've been lucky enough to do this. I've been very fortunate, and I've worked really hard to be in the radio industry. And so uh, 
to kind of shorten the story up, I worked at Katie Katie for about a year and then I got fired like some people do, um, for not showing up to work because I called in sick one day and then they said, okay, well, you don't get to come to work. And I thought, well, that's kind of weird. I didn't realize you get fired for calling in for sick. So that's what happened. A few months later, I ended up working at KUPD um, and I got a call and I got tons of experience over the years. Um, in the uh, four to five years that I was part-time at KUPD, I learned from other radio disc jockeys how to tell a story within 10 minutes because that's what you're doing with your podcast. You're doing it in an extended format, but when you're doing it in 10 minute increments, you're telling a story so that you're keeping people captivated. So I learned about how to do this interview process, and that was what was important to me. I wanted to do this over time. I had no idea that I would end up getting into podcasting. So again, uh, I've been at KUPD for about 15 years as an on-air personality. You can listen to me if you want to. It's totally up to you. You don't have to. But night 7 to midnight, um, and I run different segments on those shows, and there's all kinds of little sciences, mini sciences in radio that come with radio. Um, here you can see in the top uh, left-hand corner, uh, how many of you guys have heard of Rob Zombie? Anyone heard of Rob Zombie? Some of you guys have heard of Rob Zombie. These are all rock stars within the niche, okay? So Rob Zombie, he's a filmmaker. He made the, what, the Friday the 13th remake or something like that? So I, I got to talk to Rob Zombie. Um, David Olsen is from the band Megadeth. Um, he's actually a Valley resident, so I was able to talk to him. And what was interesting about these interviews is that these weren't your typical interviews that you get from podcasts or typical interviews that you would see on the internet. Every interview that you would look at on the internet would be asking the same question. So tell us about your latest album, Super Collider. Well, that same question was asked two days prior at a radio station in another city, and it was the same exact answer. So I started really differentiating, differentiating myself in radio by asking different questions. This one in particular, I asked Dave, David Olson, tell me which cup of coffee tasted the best. And that video did well. That was just that just happened to be it, and uh, of course up there I am doing some stage analysis, and then Corey Taylor in the top or, or the bottom right, um, he's in the band Slipknot and uh, Stone Sour, and he does some acoustic stuff. And we got to talk about you guys heard of the Foo Fighters maybe? Mm -hmm. You might have heard of the Foo Fighters. He's worked with Dave Grohl, so that was a really interesting and fun interview to talk with him about the process of recording with Dave Grohl. So these interviews have really separated myself away from the average podcast podcaster or even broadcaster for that matter. Um, I've been on ABC 15. I go in and I talk about like maybe uh, trending topics. They'll maybe talk about politics or something like that. And of course, I've been on the New Times too um, where they ask me about my favorite songs and whatnot. So I've been around for a while. So it's been cool enough to actually be honored to do this type of stuff. So I'm very, very fortunate for this. Um, Tech Phoenix. This is where it all started for me, man. Uh, this is where about three years ago, I was sitting where you were sitting and I was really delving into the idea of, of Google Plus, and I wanted to learn more about Google Plus. Um, I went to a session, I don't know if you guys know her, if you've ever heard of her, her name is Christina Wagner, but she started teaching about Facebook, and she was teaching about how to do Facebook, and all these amazing things with Facebook. And uh, really when I went to the session, they were basic things of Facebook at the time. And so it was like how to post a picture, how to create an infographic, how to do all these things. For that audience, they did not know. And so she talked about all these things, and I told my buddy Mark, I said, you know what, I would love to come to Tech Phoenix, and I would love to teach people about Google+. So I started doing that exact same thing. And around the same time, I had a podcast, a very not safe for work podcast. I mean, I work, I mean, come on, I work for a rock station, and I've got to, like, I don't have to, but I had a very not safe work podcast. When you eliminate the idea of the FCC and the violations that you could get, and the fines and everything, well, let's just say the F-bomb a hundred times in my podcast, and no one will have a problem with it. Well, that was cool and all, but I really didn't know how to get the podcast out there and get people to listen to my podcast. We had people that listened to the podcast, but they were few and, few and far between. So I went ahead and I went with my, my secondary plan and I started teaching Google+. Plus. And as you can see here, this is at uh, the Center for Entrepreneurial Innovation um, over there in Phoenix. And I built a relationship. And that's what's great about these conferences is that you can build relationships with other people who can get you in contact with other people. And particularly with podcasting, you can actually find guests at these, uh, these conferences too. So um, I actually got started getting speaking gigs. Uh, here and I taught people all this Google Plus stuff. I just dumped my Google Plus knowledge onto them. And in the back of my mind, I really knew that I should be more into the podcasting industry because I knew more about podcasting or broadcasting and the delivery of broadcasting. And when you're putting it in an on demand format, that it's no different than how you're doing it within radio. So that's what I ended up doing. I started transitioning over to the podcasting just recently. So that's it. That's enough about me. I know you guys want to hear so much more about me. So um, let's go ahead and do this. 
Um, I'm going to give you guys some statistics, and just you can write these down if you want. But these are some interesting t statistics that I don't think anyone really has gone over today with podcasting. So, just so you guys know, and what's going to really differentiate you and your podcast, you have to really imagine what you want your podcast to be about and what is going to differentiate you and how you're going to change someone's life, okay? So with these statistics, we got to look at a couple of things. In 2013, Apple reported to reach at least 1 billion podcast subscriptions through iTunes. This is the largest repository of where podcasts are. So people are definitely listening to podcasts. Uh, from five years ago, new monthly podcast listeners has tripled from 25 million to 75 million. Now, this is there's a reason why podcasting is growing, and we'll get to that here shortly. And of course, what do you do when you you work? You're you're at home. You're listening to something, or maybe if you're not even listening, maybe you're someone like me who sometimes prefers to not listen to anything. But I would say 90% of the time, I'm listening to some form of audio entertainment, or I've got TV on in the background when I'm moving around. So Americans spend about three hours a day commuting, working out, and doing different household chores and whatnot. Uh, another statistic that, that is on here is that in February of this year, 38 billion Americans alone listened to a podcast. That's a massive amount of number of people who are listening to podcasts. Now, when you talk about this and compare it to radio, and you think about people listening to radio, you're only in a local market captively unless you have satellite radio. And of course, satellite radio reaches everywhere, but even at that, you still have to tune in at a particular time to listen to that particular uh, uh, program. Now, they do, do some podcasting with that, but if you want to listen to it live and get the interaction then, you have to listen. It's called appointment listening. So, um, Allied Business Intelligence, uh, ABI, suggests that 24 million cars are going to have Apple CarPlay. How are we listening to podcasts right now? Well. Half the world has an iPhone. I have actually an Android phone, and I listen to my podcast through Stitcher. But how many of you guys know what Apple? Do you guys know what Apple CarPlay is? Does anyone know? Not know. So what Apple CarPlay does is it basically integrates your uh, iPhone to the car's dashboard. Okay, so there's going to be more cars that are going to be on the road, and even as cars get bought, they're going to be resold back, and they're going to be back into circulation with these types of systems. So your phone is going to all of a sudden be connecting with these units, okay? Um, Android is doing the exact same thing. So it's no question that Android and Apple, they know what's going on with this whole podcasting thing. Android Auto with their brand new operating system L has, is released right now and it's coming in these cars too. So you've got to kind of be aware of like where your listener is going to be. Now they're on your phone, but not only are they on your phone, but they're going to be inside of your car too. Now, most of us have about 30 minutes of a, of, a, of a commute. Some have maybe a 10 minute commute. Just depends, really depends. But what are you doing outside? You gotta really think about that. Uh, of course, here are some other uh, applications here. Um, iHeartRadio, this is the big conglomerate of uh, Clear Channel stations. So you gotta understand that iHeartRadio has now changed to iHeartMedia. They're no longer Clear Channel, they're now iHeartMedia, and they wanna get into this game. So you as a podcaster, or you as a potential podcaster, maybe you're trying to build a business, should be paying attention to a lot of this stuff. Um, a lot of other forms of enter audio entertainment, Spotify, this is Stitcher right here. This is like the iTunes for Android, TuneIn, uh, Pandora, et cetera, et cetera. This is where it all comes in and st we start stitching it all together, okay? So we'll see that the automotive industry will see more than 370 million smartphone apps integrating with software like Apple's CarPlay and Android, on, uh, Android and auto integration. That is a massive amount of people and it's just going to continue to grow and grow and grow. So getting in on the podcasting game now, whether it be for a hobby, whether it be for your business, if you're going to do it, it's time to do it now. Um, how many of you guys went to the Evo Terra speech this morning? Who went to that one? Was that an interesting speech about disruption? About disruption? So there's no... So what Evo talks about, he talks about there's no real disruption right now for podcasting, but this is a potential disruptor right here. With something being in a car, this is a disruptor. So we now start to see radio stations like where I work at should start getting a little bit scared because this is something that is brand new and is it could turn into the Netflix uh, of uh, for radio. Why are we doing podcasting? Because everyone's starting to do it. Stacy does a podcast over there. Stacy the Harris. I'm gonna start calling you. Stacy. Stacy has a podcast. What's your name of your podcast again? Hit the mic. Hit the mic. Okay. So hit the mic if you want to go subscribe to that podcast. There you go. Stacy also has a lot of uh, good content that you want to check out too. I've checked out your content. Thank you. Um, so everyone's starting to use uh, podcasting. 
uh, Rachel Maddow. And now we're not, I'm not just talking about people who are already in the media space. We may see Rachel Maddow, we may see the Smithsonian doing all this stuff, but we see everyday people creating podcasts and actually building a business around a podcast. This is what's huge to me. This is what really revs me up about podcasting. So everyone's starting to use a podcast. There's podcasts on starving the doubts, on, on, on overcoming self-doubt. My good friend right here, uh, Jared Easley, he interviewed my sister and I on uh, his podcast. And uh, I forget what it was about. It was about when I was doing Google Plus or something like that. But it was really knowing your audience because this is something I've been doing for 15 years. You've got to know your audience before you do anything else. Snooki, if Snooki can have a podcast, <laughs> you can have a podcast. I trust you on this. I trust me on this one. Snooki has a podcast, all part of the Podcast One Network. There are podcasts on CrossFit right here. These guys are huge. These are guys are called the Barbell Shrugged Podcast. And it's a bunch of dudes who like live in Kentucky or something like that. Yeah, and they sound like they're totally uneducated, but they are so smart with what they are marketing. They have thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people who subscribe to their podcast and they make a living off of their podcast. That's what they do. Okay, uh, Craft Sanity. There's, pod there's podcasts on crafting. There's podcasts on pottery. There's pod there's, I bet you there's a podcast on something that has to deal with me medical. I would even say, and I'm, I mean, I'm not going to say this, I'll say medical marijuana. I'm sure there is a podcast about it, but they'll probably make it into an educational podcast. You, so you can find podcasts just about anywhere. So this is why it's really the perfect time to start creating your podcast and jumping in, maybe reigniting yourself into a podcast and injecting yourself. Maybe if it's a passion, if it's a, if it's a hobby, maybe you want to create it as a business, okay? So I, <clears throat> so I want to go ahead and go over a couple of case studies because I feel like before we get into the seven tips that you need to know, you have to see it from an everyday perspective, an everyday person perspective, okay? There are two people here. The one on the left, his name is Wade Harmon. He's one of my friends from Google Plus. And the one on the right, I met this guy, uh, Mike Mataluni. He is uh, he's part of a, another podcast. I met him at a, a conference in January at New Media Expo. Two everyday dudes, just like you, just like me. Someone questioned that, but I'm 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 an everyday person, just like everyone else. There's nothing special about this. He didn't have to become, they didn't have to become broadcasters and they didn't have to become voice artists. Um, I think you guys might have heard if you were in the previous session with uh, when we were talking about podcasting, Danny does voice work too. And there's techniques that go behind all this stuff. These people are just everyday people. So we'll start first with Wade. And Wade has started coming to me and he was asking me really, hey, um, how do I start a podcast? And I said, well, here are the steps that you need to take. So I told him like the very basic steps and nuts and bolts of what he needed to do. And he said, oh, okay, great, great. And then he kept asking me all these things. Well, what about video podcasting? What, what can I do with this and that? And I said, dude, just get those podcasts. And what he was doing, he was using his Google Hangouts on air and he was repurposing those into a video podcast. That was huge for him. And I said, just put those back up and put them into iTunes and we'll see what happens. Well, Wade, Put his podcast up, and two days since he first put his podcast up, he started showing up in the new and noteworthy section, like like right then in the video portion. In three weeks, he got about a thousand. He got a thousand uh, downloads per week. He got three thousand downloads within three weeks. That's a lot. I mean, that's a. I mean, who wouldn't want three thousand downloads? Who wouldn't want someone to listen to their podcast for, you know, three thousand downloads like that? I know I'd love that. So Wade really started stepping up and introduced, introduced himself to a whole brand new audience away from Google+. He was doing everything on Google+, but he moved into a new arena. And so there he is, the new and noteworthy section. Who knows what the new and noteworthy section is? Okay, what, okay so can you explain what the new and noteworthy section is? It's, uh, it's basically, in the case of podcasts, it's podcasts that were selected in some reason by, some, by a magical mystery team behind the scenes at Apple that decides these are just ones that, that are worth promoting right now. Right. So, Consider this like the front page of Google, okay? But it's for iTunes for podcasting, okay? And only for the first eight weeks of your show. Right. So for the first eight weeks of your show, this is where you get a lot of your traction. You're getting a lot of your downloads. So you're, you better have a lot of good content and be planning a lot of amazing things in order to get into this if you happen to be here. My friend Jeff C. You met Jeff actually at Podcast Movement. Jeff just released his video podcast two days ago, and he is in the business section, number four, uh, number, he's at the number four spot in the business section, he's still climbing. So what he really wants to do is he's testing this out, but he has a podcast planned out to where he will have things to get people to come in and believe what he's talking about, which is the Manly Pinterest show. 
<laughs> Very cool, right? So Wade, um, I don't know what Wade's strategy was, but he stuck up there for about eight weeks. He was up there for about eight weeks, and he was telling me he's got this really amazing uh, like accent from North Carolina. He's like, ah, they should be taking me down anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> so it, a couple days after this screenshot, they ended up taking him down. The second one I want to talk about is Mike Mataluni. He has a podcast called The Kick-Ass Dads, and it's all about passionate parenting in a volatile world. So basically it's parents who have kids, but they're all, the parents also work a lot, and they end up um, having to parent like a bunch of kids, and they don't, don't know how to like manage it. So he tries to dispel a lot of the myths that go behind parenting if you're, you're pretending that you don't know how to parent. But he also started a podcast. This is just about his passion. All right. When he first launched his podcast, he got 15,000 downloads in a one-month period. We were talking about this at New Media Expo and talking about the launch strategy that he used. And it was a very similar launch strategy. He was new and noteworthy for about five weeks. But he got a lot of people from this. And what's great about this is that he actually built a business around his passion. Now, he's, he, now he has a, a company called CADCOM. And that company now is a social, social media uh, consulting, whatever you want to call it. He has built a business around that and he creates mastermind groups where he gets other entrepreneurs and parents who come in and they start uh, you know, banging their heads around trying to figure out what they can do next to build their business. So he has, this is all out of passion, strictly all out of passion. So that was what I thought was very, very cool. The last one I want to use um, is actually, this one is my sister's. This is the podcast that I produce, the Family Law Insider Podcast. When my sister came to me, she told me, I want to start a brand new website. I'm paying $8,000 a month to have a website. And I thought, well, you're nuts. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And then she said, I know. And then I said, let me rebuild your website, but I want to have And then she said, I want to do this podcast. I want to help people who are going through a tough time in, in divorce. Because people need that type of help. What she's offering is based, it's not legal advice, because you have to actually meet with a lawyer to get legal advice. But what she has seen over the course of her years, she can definitely tell what that is, as long as she's not saying names. What happened was that she was listening, she started creating all these podcasts, and then people started listening locally. And then they started listening locally who had problems, they, you know, baby mama drama, whatever it may have been. And then one day she walked, uh, she had a consultation, the guy walked in, and he started repeating everything that was in that podcast. And she's like, whoa, this is crazy. She's like, he definitely listened to podcasts. Then at the end of it, he said he listened to the podcast, and then at the end of it, boom, she had a sale without even doing anything. She got four thousand dollars right on the spot. That was mind blowing to me, and I was like, "Wow!" And all we did what was did she sell for $4, it was a con it was a services for her the guy's divorce. Oh. So As basically, least, so she got a legal. She got legal, yeah. So sale, or she got a, the guy retained for legal services for four thousand dollars. That's typically what it is. So you can definitely do this. You can make money off your podcast. You just have to know how to do it. So let me ask you guys this question: Would you like to be one of these podcast success stories? Yes. Yeah. yes. You want to be a podcast successful? <laughs> Yay! This is great! Do you want to do it around something that you love? Yeah. Maybe not? <laughs> I guess you guys are like in question of whether yeah. you do it. No. Ashley goes both ways. I hate this. You hate this. You hate it. Well, if it's something that you want to do, and it's got to be around something that you love, why not do it? Start it. Jeremy and I always talk about Jeremy and I always talk about the struggle we have about launching something, okay? We want to positively affect the world. I'm here to basically help people just get for, uh, move forward. Stacy's here to help people move forward. Everyone here is here to help everyone else, okay? So we want to positively fit, affect people. So this is where you want to get your tips, and this is where you're, you're going to want to write all this stuff down because I'm going to fly through this stuff, okay? So here are the seven tips to becoming a pro podcaster. Anyone here think they can be a pro podcaster? Yes. Yeah? yeah. Who thinks they can? And it's okay. <laughs> it's okay if you raise your hand. Do you think you, okay, so we're pretty confident about being a podcaster. All right, so let's go ahead and go. First thing you need to do, you've probably heard this today, is to define your niche. This you will hear over and over and over and over and over and over. exactly over. you'll just need, you have to define the niche you have to figure out what you love so figure out what you love to do and that is your niche that's what you want to do who is your target audience and what are their needs what do they need to know what is it excuse me what is it that you are researching that maybe someone else could research okay could be about a band it could be about video games exactly right here it could be about video games 
Um, it could be about uh, literature. It could be about comic books, really. Okay. Um, it could be about food stuff. We were just having a conversation about food stuff a little bit ago, and my friend called me on the way over here, and she says, I don't know what to start. My, I want to start a podcast, but it's all going to be based on my website, but I want to do it for food bloggers who are trying to monetize on this and that other thing. And I said, just put it on your website. Do it. Go out and do it. Create a podcast. But research your target audience, and you can do this on Twitter, Facebook, Google+, Pinterest, everywhere. Figure out what the needs are. Um, was it you, Jeremy, that was telling me that or maybe it was someone else – they were telling me there was not a niche for a particular uh, topic. Was that you? It might have been my friend. But they were saying basically there was not a niche for a podcast. And she says, I'm going to go dominate that. And I go, I think you should. Why not be known for something that you already know how to do really great? Okay. Define your niche. Start, your, uh, start conversations with these individuals on social. Don't be shy. If you're shy, that sucks. Okay. Don't be shy. Um, a lot of us are shy in this room. But it's okay. When we get out into these social situations, engage with those people and talk with them. I'm talking to you. You had a podcast. Now you, like, you started talking with me and now we have a conversation and we're like bros all of a sudden. Like this <laughs> one, right? So engage, all right? Um, next thing is the equipment and hosting. Let's put it this way. You're going to have to spend a little bit of money for your, pod, for your podcast equipment, all right? I have used $5,000 microphones that sound horrible. And I have used... This $100 microphone, and it sounds amazing. Amazing. The Blue Yeti microphone is the best microphone that I have ever used. This is only coming from the broadcast guy. It's only my opinion. All right? So if you want to use something else, if you want to use an RE20, you want to use the uh, whatever, 5 million other microphones that are out there, use that one. But this is the one that I particularly use, only because it's got a lot of settings with it within it. You can record in stereo. You can record uh, in cardioid, which means that you can record with one face. Yeah, you can record. You can record a number of ways with this microphone, and it's very versatile. Um, webcam. There is a reason why we use a webcam in our podcast. Our podcasting. Okay. Um, I use particularly Google Hangouts. Okay. Oops. I use particularly Google Hangouts. And if you already have a webcam, that's great. It's on your MacBook Pro. It's on your PC. That's fine. You can use that. But particularly with that webcam, it's HD. And what you'll be doing is you'll be uploading a lot of that stuff to YouTube and then tearing it back down from YouTube and repurposing it back into a podcast. That's what you'll end up doing. Um, you'll need a Google Plus account, and that's completely free because you'll need to conduct some type of, um, of uh, Google Hangout on air. And here's the big question. This was the biggest thing and the biggest problem for me when I first started podcasting. I'm like, well, I'm just going to host this straight on my WordPress site. No. That is like the worst possible thing to do. Don't do that. Okay? A couple problems with that. Stacy, name one. It will slow your site. Like, there's too much content. Exactly. There's just too much content. The audio files, I don't know what your audio file limit is, but I know that every audio file that I edit for the uh, Family Law Insider is about 54 to 65 megabytes per episode. That's a lot of space. So you want to have hosting either with Libsyn or Blueberry. What's the difference? Well... Do you drink Coke or Pepsi? <laughs> choose. Just choose one. Most people use Lipson. I prefer uh, Blueberry. There's just things that I like about Blueberry that, you know, I mean, I would probably would have used Lipson, but I just got Blueberry. So it really doesn't matter. Uh, audio editing. You can use Audacity. I think in your little yeah. thing you got Audacity. I so you can, you, you can use Audacity. You can use Pro Tools. I prefer to use Audition. Audition happens to be the most simple one. That's the one that I actually have been using for years now. Um, it's actually been, um, it's been uh, Cool Edit Pro prior to that, and now it's, it's Audition. Did you have something for me? Yeah, I, so quick? I use a Mac personally, and it comes with GarageBand, and I've edited over 100 episodes in there too, so if you have a Mac, it's free, and it, it can get the job done in, in the meantime as well. Right, you can use, you could do that. I prefer this, I'm showing you exactly what I use to podcast. You can use GarageBand though too. I use, so Adobe, right? I'm sorry? Um, yes. Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition. Yes. Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition. Adobe Audition. This is uh, 20 bucks a month with their Creative Cloud suite. All right? So you can get it. Were you using it before they went Creative Cloud? I was using Cool Edit Pro before it went over. Yeah, before they switched it over. Yeah. So, um, and of course, you need a WordPress site. This is how I, po I podcast. You have to have a WordPress site. Um, if you're using like Joomla or Drupal or Wix or anything like that, I'm going to tell you to delete Joomla, Wix, everything else, and get a WordPress site that's self-hosted on a GoDaddy, Bluehost, HostGator, something like that. Whatever one that you decide to choose, okay? Um, scheduling guests. 
Well, how do you get guests to come to your podcast? Well, listen to other podcasts. That's the best way. When we were at podcast, when I went to a session and there was a gal that said, well, I'm not... I'm having a hard time finding guests. Where do I get them? And then one of the gals that was up on the stage, she says, well, likely that the person that is on the other end of the podcast hosting the podcast is looking for a guest. So you should probably listen to their podcast because they're looking for a guest and you're looking for a guest. How about you guys both meet? That's how it works. Don't be afraid. Yeah, and you you start promoting other other people's podcasts. So it could be about a college prep podcast. Um, Watch other Google Hangouts on air. Um, People think that Google Plus is a platform that does not exist, that is highly incorrect. Um, when you say, oh, I think LinkedIn is it's okay, it's kind of there, it's actually a thriving community on LinkedIn. You just have to get in there and start using it. So watch other Google Hangouts on air because there are people on there that are actually using right here. These, uh, these girls right here are her fantasy football. I met these girls at uh, Podcast Movement and they are three girls live in three different cities and love football. Like they love football more than a man loves football. And they have a show, particularly seasonal, that has to deal with fantasy football. And they repurpose those hangouts right into a podcast, an audio podcast. Okay. Build relationships through social media. I'm going to keep hammering this into everyone's brain. Uh, iTunes reviews. iTunes reviews are huge. Just because whenever you go in and you do an iTunes review, you're helping that podcast start showing up in those uh, in those new noteworthy sections, in those business sections. You could show up in the marketing and whatever section, and those reviews definitely help. So encourage, um, not only encourage reviews, but give reviews for the podcast. And be you know you can be honest, or you can give a five star rating, or you can give like a three star rating and say this podcast sucks. Okay. Um, and email them. Start building a, some communication between them, okay? Um, go to trade shows. This is how I met Jeremy. I mean, I met Jeremy at a trade show. So you can go to South by Southwest, Social Media Marketing World, Podcast Movement, um, Comic-Con. You might think that I like comic books, but I don't like comic books. I just know that comic books happens to be the thing these days. But you can go to Comic-Con and meet a lot of people and hand out cards. You can go to bridal expos and uh, exchange the business cards, build the relationships this way. Um, like I said before, and I'll keep using him again as an example, Jeremy is another, a great example. We met a podcast movement. We both were in line with the vision, what we want to do with our own business, our own podcast. And now we have mushroomed a relationship. We're, I mean, we're bros at this point. So we're bros. So um, here's another cute little tool that you might want to use. How many of you guys have heard of this one? Schedule once. I've heard of schedule once. This is why I use the schedule my guests on the show. Exactly. That's what you use to schedule your guests. Why do we use Schedule Once instead of Google Calendar? Well, instead of instead of emailing people, emailing your guests saying, "Hey, how about Tuesday?" and the guest says, "Well, I have a meeting on Tuesday at two. And then you go, "Okay, well, how about Tuesday at eleven? Well, I got my daughter at eleven. Well, okay, how about this? Let's s- simplify that process. Have them go to your calendar, and it'll show when you're available, and then they can pick the time whenever uh, they can be on your podcast and record. That is a useful tool, if you ask me. How often do you use that?" Every day. Every day, because I use it for my clients. Exactly. Yeah. So when someone says, let's schedule a time, I had like four people like all in one day this last week all say, hey, let's schedule a time. And I was like, hey, I'm not playing this game. <laughs> and I sent them to my schedule once, and that's what worked. Recording. You might think that you need a soundboard. You really don't anymore. Unless Google decides to get rid of Hangouts on Air, this is how I do it. You can use Skype. You can use Skype Call Recorder. This is how I use it. Most people who are using Google Hangouts on Air are using it incorrectly for the sound. They're using the sound incorrectly. There's a better way to do it. But just know that this is your recording software. After you record your Hangout on Air, um, your videos are uploaded into your YouTube channel privately. I think it's private. Is it pri- it's public, I think. Well, it depends on how you set it up. Yeah, you're right. So it is. So it really depends. But for the most part, they're going to be in this repository that you have in the back end of your YouTube channel. And right here, um, right here, you can go ahead and uh, down. There's a, a little drop down menu that says, "Hey, uh, I want to download this MP4 video file." And that's where you get the video file. And you can go ahead and uh, rip the audio and do it in your audition or something like that. Um, that's yeah. That's the next point. Uh, pull the file, MP4 file, convert it to audio, then resave it as an MP3 file. That's what you would want to do. Okay. Publishing. You need to, of course, upload to a hosting service like Blueberry. Um, so pick Blueberry, Libsyn, doesn't matter. Just make sure you have it there. That's where you're going to save a lot of your, your time right there. Write up show notes and at least make it, I, I personally like about 500 words minimum. If you hate writing show notes, 
then do you not write show notes? I do write show notes. They're like 150 words. Yeah, <laughs> 500 words. I, when I was in the Google Place uh, space, um, this was this was highly encouraged. 500 words because oh, Google nice. cannot crawl audio. You right. need to have show notes that describe what your podcast is all about, so that whenever you, the organic search comes through, the little the web crawler, it knows what your podcast is about, and it brings up the most relevant result when you do a Google search and that your podcast will end up showing up there. So you're not only, you're, you're kind of doubling up. You're not only showing up in iTunes, but you're also showing up in Google. So you want to double up on this, this, uh, this visibility, okay? Post to a WordPress blog, I'll hammer that in your brain again. Um, you need to post to a WordPress blog, I don't care. That's just no question. Zero, zero argument, that was it. Zero argument on that, okay? Uh, and then getting traffic, duh. We use Facebook, we use Twitter, we use Google Plus. We encourage iTunes ratings and reviews. You have to do this. What's the point in having a, a podcast when you're not telling anyone about it? You have to encourage ratings and reviews. So do this. Encourage it on iTunes. That's why I recommend you encourage the ratings. But when it comes to Stitcher, do the same thing because they have a, a similar algorithm that I've noticed every time you release a brand new podcast, you show up at the very top of the list. But when you're getting ratings and reviews, that's whenever you start seeing a little bit of a bump. Okay. Um, support of the podcast and appear on other shows. I mentioned that earlier. That's what you need to do. Okay. Last step, and I hope I'm not going too fast for you guys because I got. Well, I got. I think I got a little bit of time here. I got a little bit of time. Jeremy and I were talking about this one. Build a community. Build a community on Facebook. Build a community on Google Plus. I mean, these are groups on Facebook, but they're communities on Google Plus. And start creating something within your podcast that people can latch onto. So that they can they can be a part of what you're a part of, okay? You want that. Lastly, this is the part that everyone hates: the marketing, the worst part. And I try to help people in this case. Do go with this with less for as, as least amount of friction as possible. But this is a must. When you're in your podcast, drive them to your website to get an email address. Give them some gives away something for free, okay? Get an email address. Provide this free and as irresistible giveaway and put it on your website, and then promote it inside of your giveaway or your your uh, your podcast. Do it either at the front, do it at the end, do it in the middle. Promote something that is of value. It just can't be something that's like, oh hey, my first born. Well, that might be something of value because then there might be someone who's like, well, they're not <laughs> they're neglecting their child. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, but you could say, hey, you know, I've got a tool list. And some of, some of the best giveaways that are on, on websites that get downloaded are tool lists. You might slave over an ebook like I did one year. I slaved like four months on an ebook and no one downloaded it. And I was like, that sucks. Because I wasted all that time writing that ebook. Give something away, make it easy. What do you know that people would want, to, who else would want to know something, okay? And uh, at least email your subscribers once a week. The reason I have a MailChimp uh, guy right there is because that is probably the most affordable and it's very effective. I've done, I mean, I've done money transactions through just strictly MailChimp. I didn't need to use Infusionsoft. So use MailChimp or, or AWeber. If you want to go the route of like Infusionsoft, maybe you're, you're hyper-powering the, the message, do it through Infusionsoft, okay? So I really wish I could show you a lot more. There's so much I mean I really could delve into. So um, was some of this helpful for you guys? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. Some, some of it was like you already knew about it. You already knew about it? Okay. So I want you to go ahead and inside that little pamphlet, I have a space in there, okay? And it's on the left-hand side when you open it up. And the reason you're here is because you want to take some form of action to get further in the podcasting game. And I want you to go ahead and write in that section right now. I want you to write in there. Tell me, what is your mission, your vision, or your purpose for your podcast? So take like a, take like a minute to tell me what your mission, your vision, or your purpose is for your podcast. And then I want to hear a couple, and I want to know what your mission, your vision, is, your purpose. Because sometimes whenever this happens, there's a light that goes off. It may not be now, but it may be later. It may be, you know, three weeks from now. But write something down. Who do you want to affect? So what's your mission, your vision, or your purpose? Go ahead and uh, write that down, and I'm going to go ahead and, uh, if there's anyone that wants to share, just raise your hand. Okay, 
so does anyone want to share their, their mission, vision, or purpose? Who do you want to affect? Yes. Stacy says I have to share mine. Stacy um, has to share hers, too. <laughs> so I'm a career coach for women, but um, okay. I just put down to help women struggling in a job or career they hate to get out and into a career they love. See, that to me sounds you, inspirational. New and noteworthy. New and noteworthy. <laughs> yes. yes. Do, you think you, do you think you could definitely help that group of women? Yeah, I already do. Do you, think you can, do you think you can expand that even more with the podcast? Do you, are you trying to reach a local market or are you trying to reach a global market? Both, either. Okay. I should probably decide that. But yeah. I, I would like to Why not that. help everyone? Yeah. Right? That's good. That's really good. Anyone else want to share one? Don't be shy. It's okay. My mission, my vision, and my purpose, I really want, I want to aid those who are starting a podcast or trying to reinvigorate their podcast so that it can be profitable or rewarding in some way. That's one of my missions and my visions and my purpose, okay? So anyone else too shy? Go ahead. I have a pair of vlogs currently on playing Pokemon and other insights I've had on, on video game culture. Mm -hmm. Nice. And I've been thinking about maybe rolling that into a, an accompanying podcast to the vlog. Yeah. So video game chatter because that's what I like to do. So you want to affect Video, you want to uh, you want to attract video gamers and what like inspire them to do what? <laughs> so, like I said, it doesn't have to be right now, but think about what you want to do and inspire them. Try to inspire them to do something that they that someone already isn't else someone else isn't already doing. Okay, yeah. I just kind of said what it is, but branch out to like uh, anime, video games, music, a whole bunch of other cultures that I can get my hands on. So okay. it's kind of like more just like share opinions and cool facts that no one else really thought before. So you want to build a community. Basically, yeah. You want to build a community. Okay. No, that's good. That's definitely good. Was there someone else? Yeah. Okay. Um, I spent a lot of my life so far being really insecure and unsure of what I really wanted to do. So through my podcast, I want to find myself and come to what I'm comfortable with and really good at and help other people realize that. Um, that's that's really very cool. cool. Yeah. That is very cool. No, that's very, I mean, I'm getting chills actually right now. That's very cool. So, think about this. What would it be like to have a successful bit podcast based around your passion? Think about that. And how would you feel about that success? It's just a question. Imagine what it would be like. <laughs> Imagine that. It'd just be so cool to have a podcast. Maybe it's on the new and noteworthy section and it keeps re, it starts showing up again in new and noteworthy. You just don't have to have a podcast that's new and noteworthy or new that just happens to show up in new and noteworthy. It can show back up. Okay. So after today, can you see why podcasting can really support the vision that you already maybe have in your mind? Can you see that already? With all the statistics that I've given you? Yeah? Kind of? Okay. So here's the deal. Here's the deal. Thank you guys so much for showing up. What I want you guys to do is that inside that pamphlet on the back, so it should be on the inside, there is a module that I want to give to you guys for free. Totally for free. You guys are here. You're taking action. You're, you're here. To, you're interested to know more. I'm, I'm teaching this module right now, actually, or this class right now. And this is really the first module that teaches you all about the setup. But I go a little further and in depth with what this is all about. Don't worry about the price. Just go ahead. What I want you to do is I want you to cross that price out right now. Cross the price out and just write free. All right? And then I want you to write your name. Give me your first name and your last name and your email address. And today after we get done with this presentation, give me a couple days and I'll go ahead and I'll send you that very first module for free. Does that sound good? Yeah? Oh, do you need one? Oh, okay. Does that sound that sounds good? Okay. All right. So, did you guys get a lot of information from here that you that you possibly could put into practice starting today? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Cool. Well, um, I'm gonna go ahead and open it up for questions. I have about five minutes worth of questions. Um, if you guys uh, want to go ahead and ask those questions, if you don't have any questions, you're more than welcome to get up and go. It's, again, it's the unconference, and you can go ahead and roll out. When you're done with that, go ahead and come up to me afterwards and um, hand in your uh, – we'll go ahead and tear that part off, and we'll go ahead and hand that in. And uh, I'll go ahead and send that freebie on over to you guys, okay? So thank you guys so much for coming.
So I'll open it up for questions if you guys have questions. Do you need voice training to be a good podcaster? I'm sorry? Do you need voice training to be a voice training? Yeah. Like voice. Voice. Oh, voice training. Um, this is always a tough question to answer. You need some form of training. You, I'm not saying you need voiceover training, but you need you need vocal training. And the way uh, it has worked for me is that when I started in radio, I got up and I was really timid and I used to get in the microphone and talk like this. And then my boss, because it's when you work for a radio station, that's a service that you get. You get the service for them to tell you, you sound horrible. <laughs> <laughs> they offer that for free. They offer that for free for you. And they say, you sound horrible. Step up the game. So typically they say, tight and bright. Sound tight, sound bright. Move slow. Um, and it just takes practice. When you start your first podcast, what you'll end up doing is that you'll see the first three um, go by. But then by the time you get to about 30, you find, you find that you're very comfortable in your skin when you start talking. And you're very confident. And you want to have that confidence in there. So I would suggest getting some type of voice training. Yes. Um, always investing in whatever that it is that you want to do. Yes. Get some type of voice training. Okay. Yes? Uh, can you share like, any like cool tips and tricks with Google Hangouts? Because I've tried it before, but I don't know. I guess it's just not like scratching the surface of the surface. Of it. Uh, what are you trying to do exactly? Uh, like, while, while I'm like, broadcasting like, openly YouTube, I want to play like, MP3 music in the background. Okay. Uh, like, what does it do so people can hear my voice over it? Uh, I'd right. never be able to figure out how to do it. Well, there's a problem with that. They don't let you do it. They don't let you do it. Huh. That's right. Um, there are pro so there's a license to copyright issues that go with that. So you cannot record your hangout on air and have music playing in the background or music playing underneath. No, I'm, I'm not talking about like license music, like freeware music. Like you, that, uh, you can put on YouTube without like, getting copyright like, for it. Yeah, you can get royalty free music yeah. and do that definitely. But you, I would say that if you're trying to do that, you're going to have to plug into a mixing board, and that just becomes a big wiry mess. Um, and that's the only thing that I can see that is the only thing holding you back from doing that. But um, considering that there are a ton of Google Hangouts on air that are already going on over there, they're really just talk shows and what they do is they just, the content is engaging. That's the thing. They want the content engaging so that they can get people to come in and follow them. That's why. So you want the content to be engaging. Music doesn't really matter in this case. Okay. Right. But if you want to do that, definitely do it. Excuse me, just get a mixing board and then you can work from that, that, uh, that stage right there. But if it's, and make sure, yeah, make sure it's like, License, um, license free. You can go to like Neo Sounds. You can go to uh, uh, Audio Jungle and get something like that. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. All right. Cool. Any other questions? No. Well, you guys are free to go. Uh, just if you have your, uh, if you have your thing, go ahead and come on up and uh, hand it to me, and I will go ahead and collect those, and I'll be sending you some, some stuff. Oh, I remember my question. What's your okay. question? Okay. So I'm pretty poor. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry. I know. No, uh, Thank you. So a lot of there's a lot of clicks. Subscriptions stuff, and I'm worried about being able to afford that. I'm going to start small, but it's not like a requirement to like, looks like hosting my really? podcast. Yes. You want to just go ahead and start your podcast if, if, you're, if you're on it? But yeah, if you want to go ahead and start your uh, thank you, hey, thank you, thank you. Um, if you want to go ahead and start your podcast, just start small. It's with partnership and lawyer, and then just start building up and getting more money. Thank you so much. Thank you. For, uh, that's fine. That's fine. Thank you. 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 Thank Five minutes, five minutes, five minutes. It's really more tips and tricks than anything else. That's all I get. And then we'll see. I've got a webinar coming up. You want to join it? Cool. Or sure. not. But he has to go to the Cool. Awesome. Hey, thank you very much. Nice meeting you. Yep. Yeah. I'm cool. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate that. Right now, I'm just coming with a skip. So awesome. Let me answer her question. Okay, okay, okay. Because it's never so, uh, so yeah, I would really just um, start small. Um, that's what I did actually in my very, very, very first podcast. And I don't remember what the website was called. No, just can't. Uh, I can't remember. It was like a microblogging site, and you could host audio. You could actually host a lot of audio on there. And that's what I started using. And then when I started getting serious, I, those things that I needed to do, 
those are the things that I need to use in order to get um, up and running with a larger style podcast. So that's what it was. So it's kind of small first, and then you know, toward just take baby steps. That's all it's going to take. So because, I mean, you say, what, you're 18? Yeah. So yeah, just take baby steps. Oh, okay, so great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh-huh. So go ahead and just take those baby steps, and then once you take those baby steps, you're going to find that you like, I want to do something a lot bigger than this. Yeah, now you know how. So, um, and typically, like in my uh, emails, I'll send emails and I'll say, hey, look, I'm trying to do this on a podcast. Um, I'll share tips on, like, hey, this is the latest mic that I found that sounds great. Or I'll say, hey, if you're trying to do the marketing behind your micro or to, behind your podcast, this is what you need to do. There's no sense in you really having to try to figure it out on your own because, trust me. Uh, I'm coming here, I'm like, everyone has just so much knowledge that they're willing to give. Yeah. Yeah, and we just want to see everyone succeed. That's really all it is. So just kind of think about that. And you being 18 right now, I'm not just being 18. I don't have a lot of money. Yeah. But just start school. Do you go to school? You're gonna go to school here, do you? I don't. Okay. So just kind of think about it that way, and then just start budgeting out as you start growing you a new job. And you start becoming a lot more uh, self-sustaining. Then you'll start. To get people willing to give me money. You can definitely do that on the website too. Yeah. So, but it takes a lot of commitment. It takes a lot of money. So, okay, what was your name? My name is Annika Wolf. Annika, nice yep. to meet you. I De- just actually made a Twitter today. Oh, did you really? <laughs> In one of the sessions to talk about how important I was like, oh, I was just talking to Yeah, start a, t- a Twitter and Instagram. I had one like in like eighth or ninth grade. And oh, really? <laughs> so I deleted it. I'm like, okay, it's going to start over. Yeah, Twitter, you got to use it. I know a lot of people are using Instagram now. That's the I'm big pretty thing. Are you active on, on that one? Instagram, yeah. All right. Well, like follow me. Yeah, follow me on there. You can find my Instagram up on my website too. I was on Zoom for a little bit, so I like messing with the filters. Oh yeah. Do you have an Android phone or do you have a? I got an iPhone. Do you, do you use the Snapseed app? I've never heard of that. Use the Snapseed app. You'll love that application. Snapseed. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. yeah. Question for you: Is there a way to like we work for a company that has like 500 employees that we can do this and kind of limit it to just our company, maybe put a password with it or? Uh, so podcasts just specifically for your company? Yes. No and yes. No mainly. Um, because it's gonna be a public it's gonna be public mainly. Uh, well, let's put it this way. Yes, if it's only on your website. No if you're trying to publish it to iTunes. Okay. 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 So Yes, if you have it on there, maybe it's password protected, and then they can download the audio directly there, but it's not something that you can get in iTunes. You can also find that, get that RSS feed. You can get the RSS feed, and then you can say, this is the RSS feed, put it in your podcast, like Beyond Pod, or um, any other podcaster, podcaster that's there, and then they can do that. Okay, that's, that's a good idea, RSS feed. All right, thank you. Okay. No, not a problem. Stacy, I nurse. just wanted to say hi. Hi. Uh, you did a great job. Thank you so much. Thanks for all my you, shout outs. You're all you're all <laughs> into it. I am. You're I love podcasting. It. I hate writing blog posts. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I only write 150 words for my show notes. I had well see I had to actually take a break from blogging because I was sitting so much. I was literally sitting so much. I, for the moment. Yeah, like I say sitting so much, people are like, oh yeah, two hours. No. We're talking like eight, nine hours. It's strictly sitting. And um, I started getting scared because the back of my leg started hurt. My legs started to feel my toes were numb. Mm-hmm. And I was like, this is <laughs> Yeah, that's time to get up. So it's time to sit up. And my heart, I started, my heart started feeling like really tight. My chest, and I'm like, this is not good. So then I, so the reason why you haven't seen that movie plus is because I have unplugged and I'm just like going to the gym. That's <laughs> good though. So that's what I, that's why I'm doing that. So I just, I can't, I can't sacrifice. I can't sacrifice this for, my health, so I have to really focus on what I do. I like to get up and walk around my house like in the middle of the day. But that's the joy of the whole Right by the entrance. Right. <laughs> okay, thank yeah, you. Absolutely. Yeah, they're right. actually uh, starting right now. Oh, yeah. Okay. It was supposed to start at 4. <laughs> wow, 4 o'clock. Is it 4 o'clock already? Sorry, what were those two? What that can for the RSS team? Oh, uh, Lipson and Blueberry. Thank you. Not a problem. Um, um, but yeah, that is, it's important. You have to take care of yourself because you are your commodity. If you don't totally. take care of yourself, you can't do anything else. Oh, yeah, totally. So, I mean, uh, everyone in my family knew it. They were like, oh, like, uh, mm-hmm. so then they said, just go out and 
No, I mean, I went and got the camp membership, and I was like, okay. I mean, I already had an elliptical machine at home, but it kept breaking on me, and I was like, I had it. Yeah. I was on it, and I broke it again. <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't have it. So I just went out and got a gym membership and started working out. Well, and there's something good about going someplace else and, like, getting out of your sort of, like, headspace and, yeah. and oh. your distractions. And then, yeah, I'll do that, but after I do, like, three more things. Right, yeah, that's, that's totally neat. So, like, there is a definite set time mm -hmm. that I'll go to the gym. There's a definite set time when I will exercise. There's a definite set time when I will cool down. And then there's a definite set time when I go back home. Mm -hmm. So it's really, it clears the mind. So, how are things going with you? Like, I see you doing all the, all the social stuff, the Google Plus stuff. I'm doing lots of Google Plus stuff. Yeah. I'm slowly converting more and more people to hang up on air. So my mission in life. You know, I, I love Google Plus. Yeah. yeah, I gave up uh, on all that, trying to convert everyone. It's hard. They don't, well, they all invest in the Google Store. Yeah. And so, really, like, the purpose behind this is so that I can keep on Google Plus because I'm sure And then once you start being involved, you know, yeah. you get involved in the hangouts on air, and then you're like, oh, wow, this is actually pretty cool. <laughs> My yeah. feedback. Well, the way I've done it is I've been teaching people, and I do what I do like once a month. I teach people how to do their webinars. Because so many of my clients are like online coaches and online businesses. So I'm like, you can do your webinars without using GoToWebinar. I'm like, converted. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I mean, yeah. Why, why spend a hundred bucks when it's for free right here? Uh -huh. with chat Not to mention a thousand dollar limit to the amount, or the thousand person limit to the amount of people that can view it. Right. As many people as you can get on YouTube, we can be here on Yeah, hour. exactly. Exactly. I mean, that's what I think is amazing about hangouts on air. I mean, uh, you know me a boss. Mm -hmm. Mia, Mia just, like, she's always crushing it with that. Yeah. And I'm just kind of like, okay, but Mia's just me. Mia's just being crazy. There's so many, like, good ones, though, that's like, just look at the crazy things that can happen. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. embrace the tools. Oh, yeah, totally. And I mean, I think, like, what that kid was asking over there, he was like, I have no idea. I'm losing this and everything like that. Uh, to me, I feel like maybe that might be a disconnect in knowing how to get on the software or on, on mm -hmm. the platform and play with it, as opposed to just jumping on a port one time and then getting off of it. You have to actually get in there and learn it. So. And that's the thing is, it does so much that people like just don't. It's like you can't just do it one time and think you're going to know it. Right. It's, right. it's the same as anything else. Well, that's like part of this whole course, mm -hmm. you know, like that I'm teaching. I, mean, I told them, look, I did the homework for you, mm -hmm. but you have to apply it. You have to apply it for yourself. I can't do it for you. And so that's why like, I don't do So I'm sure, are you doing uh, client calls or something like that? So I'll see, I hate client calls because it's really, I'm like, they're bitch at that. Like, well, I don't want to do that. I'm like, well, I don't know what to say because you have to do this one thing. See, I'm very selective. <laughs> well, see, and that's what, that's what I have resulted yeah. down to. Like, I don't, like, I get offered, like, I got offered yesterday to do something for podcast. And something like, oh, look, no, no, no. I'm not someone's bitch. Mm -hmm. I am creator of my own future. I am not about to be someone's bitch right now. Yeah. And so, um, so that's really all it is. And, you know, I, I mean, the products, you know, the products, the products are great because you can do whatever you want with the product. Yep. But I'm showing you what I do. Yep. Do it how you want. I have, well, I have a quick podcast guide. I've got the Facebook one and I've got the Google Plus one. And it's like, you have questions? Here you go. And I put so much free content out that it's like, well, people, you know, I can't afford that. I said, well, then here's the list of my podcasts. Here's the list of my video shows. Here's the list of the blog posts that I've done. Learn away. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you got to leverage your time. Like you said, you, have, you can't take care of yourself. And at some point, doing, yeah. providing services, doing coaching, like doing that for, especially low dollars. I just do it for much higher dollars. Yeah. You, you, you're, you're burning yourself out. At the end of last year, I was so burned out doing one-on-ones and stuff like that. Yeah. So I literally got sick. Mindful of your time, yeah. Very mindful of your time, and that is where the problem was. It was mindful, it was mindful of my time, and the problem was that I was meeting at their, where they mm -hmm. were, their office, their house, their whatever, mm -hmm. and I was having to drive. And I'm like, there is a way easier way to do this. Send them all virtually. And so, well, <laughs> these are people who have no clue whatsoever, yeah. and I'm like, there's a way easier way to do this. Trust me on this. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, no, I can't do it that way, and I'm just kind of like, so then. Uh, I just started just chopping them down at that point. I was like, don't need your money, don't need your money, don't need your money. I mean, I got a job, I don't need your money. And mm -hmm. they were like, why? And I go, I just, I, I'm done. I just don't need consulting anymore. Mm -hmm. I just don't do it. You have to respect your own time or no one else will. Yeah. Like, and it really, it comes down to that. Mm -hmm. They will go as far as you let them go. Yeah. And you know, we have a six-year-old. Like, I started my business to have more time to go. Not less. So I went from working, what, 60, 70 hours a week last week to 30 hours a week, or last year to 30 hours a week this year. Yeah, I mean, if 
you like, know how to manage your time better than you <laughs> yeah. know. I mean, I still work. Like, I, I love to work. That's the thing. I yeah. love working. I mean, if I'm not, yeah. if not working, I love moving and being learning something. Mm-hmm. I mean, I consider that work. So I love to do that, but for me, that's free time. Yeah. You know, that's free time. Working, I, like, this is working. Yeah. Just come up and speak for an hour. That's working. Yeah. To sit at home and chat online and people go, oh, I love your voice. Okay. Like, yes, yeah, <laughs> like, I know. Get on my list. That's uh, important. You know, and I know that like half this half this uh, class, I know that half of them don't understand the list building and all that. But you know what? You got to start from somewhere. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's, that's why like, when I, I mentioned the marketing in the last. Like, I know people are like, oh, I want to look about the marketing. And it's like you yeah, have to do the marketing. The <laughs> you got to do that part. Uh-huh. That's the part that's gonna be. That's like the exclamation point on all of the stuff that you're doing. So it's just. That's why I'd rather do a product and let them figure it out for mm-hmm. themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. So, when is your next course? They run all the time. Mine are evergreen. Oh, you're at, okay, okay. So um, you uh, so you sell them in webinars or what's the story? I sell them in webinars. I sell them for my list. Mm-hmm. People refer them. Sure. Affiliate program for them. Right. So. The bulk of them, like if, it, if it's time to like hustle up some cash, you know, all days are coming, whatnot. Yeah, webinars. Oh, you're like, time to do what now? <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah, it's webinars. A couple weeks ago, I did a, a, I called it the kick-ass nail bundle, and I did like, because I take my webinars down, I don't need them up. Right. And uh, so I bundled like five webinars I've done this year, and I sold them for like 50 bucks. Yeah. It was like, totally, what did totally Where's your printed one? Well, so I use a fake name online. Yeah. So I associate, I'll put that on here in case I got a picture taken. Um, it would be with the fake name and not the real one. Gotcha, gotcha. Always one step ahead. Guys, do you need me to unplug there? I can unplug out. No, no, you don't need to do anything. I was just going to save the recording in case nobody had done that yet. Okay, cool. I think somebody came through. Yeah, I bet Kevin was here already, but I just... Yeah. came in, but I don't know what he was doing, so... No. Yep, here we go. Stop record. <laughs>